This is your daily briefing and you're most welcome to it. A nice bit of sunshine, so I thought I'd come and sit in the shade. Um, Brighton, Brighton at home. Um, absolutely terrifying game, um, all things considered. And I'll come on to that. But do you know, after the game, I, I then switched over and started watching the, um, the City-Liverpool match. We're light years, light years away from, from decent teams. And if you don't understand that, and if you're not an advocate for that kind of common sense approach to what we're watching, you're part of the problem. And that's a phrase I think we need to keep using. When people do daft things, say daft things, we need to remind them that they're part of the problem because things will not change while people are still saying, oh, Eric Dyer is a leader. The guy's a plinth, that's what he is. Um, my notes are catching in the breeze. Um, so if you're capable of holding two thoughts in your head at the same time, then you may appreciate what follows. I'm glad that we lost yesterday. The last few weeks have been an exercise in self-delusion on a par with that chemical alley guy from the Gulf War. People spewing out the most opt Are you going to call me negative? Oh, you're very so p pessimistic. No, I, I am a pragmatist. I am a realist. Peddling this waffle that so-and-so is a good player. Players that have been rejected relentlessly have been a, just a tribute to failure. And you keep, keep on supporting the ridiculous notion that somehow they're going to come good. And we'll come on to that. We've been thumping te teams on the slide whilst playing Conte ball, which is Mourinho ball minus the Titan bile um, that M Mourinho got, God help him. And do you know something? The football in the main has been a chore. Yes, I like watch Spurs. Watch, I like watching Spurs score, but you know, I would say almost at what price? We're not achieving anything. We're not going anywhere. We're just going around in circles. And fans, and this is it. Fans cheering, mindless, utterly mindless stat padding. Some of you have been cheering and celebrating stuff that wouldn't be out of place at an infant school sports day. And how a world-class manager is able to sit in presses week after week talking about improvement in respect of players, many of whom are closer to retirement than they are to ever winning anything. Utterly beyond parody. When a football team is a Jaffa Tanganga and a Matt Doherty from success, that football team is a farce. For a while, whilst watching the game, I felt Spurs were going to pull their now usual routine, the rope a and then pop two or three past Potter's lot in the second half. As it was, this match, with a Boxing Day feel about it, it didn't even have the same cut price magic to it as the Leeds, Everton and Newcastle victories. No records for scoring on a weaker foot were shattered today. What was clear is that in Conte's absence, something went wrong. He's, I, I think they were overtrained. That's what I think. There's two, well, there's two, there's, two, there's two possible outcomes to what happened. You saw them. You watched them play in slow motion from the off to the very end. They were either overtrained them, so what should have been left in the tank for Brighton had already been spaffed across the manicured, manicured lawns of Hotspur Way. Either that or the mentally weak oafs that we have on our books saw a chance to slack off in the gaffer's absence and they took it. And what was Harry Kane playing at, flying over to the States? We've all gone out for the day. <laughs> you know, you go, to, you go to a big city, you, you know, you have a little, you know, those, those of you with a bit of cash on the hip might fly over. It takes it out of you. It takes it out of you. I don't care he's an elite, elite level athlete, blah, blah, blah. Should have been f focused on the matter in hand, which was Brighton. They told us there were seven cup finals and he's, he's naffed off to the States to watch the golf. It was on the telly, mate. Harry Winks has played 200 games for Spurs. He has five goals and six assists. Let me just run that by you again, okay? Because I know how, how sometimes things you don't want to hear, you tune out. Harry Winks has played 200 games for Spurs. He has five goals and six assists. That's less than one goal or assist a season. Yet the club's social team are capable of reading a room. Let me read this to you. Sissoko, who, you know, all this goat stuff, but 
in truth, a bit of a donkey. 202 games, five goals and 16 assists. Benteleb, 66 games, one goal and six assists. Hossam Ghali, shirt thrower extraordinaire, 34 games, three goals and six assists. Winks came on today at nil-nil and what did we expect to happen? The mentality of the club is woeful from top to toe. Talk of top four finishers vexed me, vexed me, vexed me very much. We are barely improved from the squad that was repeatedly humiliated in the Europa Conference League. I mean, I sometimes wonder if, if instead of me being, could it possibly be that I'm not the crazy guy? Who forgets those games that we played in Europe? We were awful absolutely awful and that was Europe's third tier of football and none of, none of those bloody games are worth watching. The squad still requires major surgery and talk of Champions League football is entirely embarrassing please stop it and I'll remind you again Fabio Paratici has got a 50% success rate so far which leads me on to this. Over 145 million pounds worth of Tottenham players are currently out on loan. And it's not for development reasons, it's because we bought players that turned out to be junk, just weren't right, or just run out of ideas what to do with them. Because they were bought off a bloody spreadsheet. And it's no, like I say, it's not as if it's somebody from the academy. So you've got Sydney, Sydney Toenails from Enfield. Um, we wish him well on, he's, he's going, we're loaning him out to you know, Chelmsford Town. It's nothing to do with that. 145 million quid's worth of bad bets. These flops, we've f forced them into somebody else's shop window because we can't even shift them while they're playing for us because the magic of the Tottenham shirt doesn't equate. As far as ride enjoyment is concerned, I, I, listen, if you got really excited and were punching the end, leaping around like performing monkeys while we were thumping these teams on the slide, and make no mistake, that's who we were beating, then God bless you. God bless you. But as far as ride enjoyment is concerned, I, I mean, look, the, the crowd yesterday, more life in a tramp's vest because it's full of tourists. Tottenham are a million miles away from where they ought to be. You think about the size of the operation. And I'm not just whining on about all the money that they've spaffed into um, infrastructure or blah, blah, blah. Totally taking their eye off the main thing. The main thing is, is the football, and they, they, they've totally ignored it. Yeah, you've got a point that fills up from the bottom in 16 nanoseconds. Got an artisan vegan wrap that you know won't give you food poisoning tremendous amazing fantastic world-class training facilities I have to break it to you these players are using it as a spa that's why we're not getting any results out of there and and we're, listen i don't expect anything to be a magic wand but for christ's sake you spend this money on a training facility has no effect on, on the, uh, the return time of players who find themselves injured or fatigued no no influence whatsoever The rebranding of players continues at some pace. Eric Dyer. I mean, I, I actually had a look through some, some, and I shouldn't have done it for my, my, own, my own mental health. I had a look through some of the social media accounts or, um, on, on the match day. People were referring to Eric Dyer as a legend. Yeah, yeah, that's right, he's a legend. Um, Spurs have got six games left and uh, he, you tell me, you tell me, you tell me, you tell me. Good luck, keep it on them.